essentially I could boil it down to just a few secrets and I'll share those with you now. One of the things that I get asked about the most is how to paint hair. So that's what I'm giving to you guys today. I'm going to share with you my secrets on how to paint hair in oil paint. I just use a handful of colors in it. I have phthalo turquoise, ultramarine blue, cadmium red deep, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow, and white. I didn't use black in here at all. Um, I just used some mixtures in order to create the black. But essentially, I could boil it down to just a few secrets, and I'll share those with you now. So secret number one is to keep everything pretty dark. Don't think of long individual strands of hair, just small highlights, and keep things soft, especially around the edges and in the shadow areas. So now let's see how I use those three secrets in action, painting hair in oil. I start off with just a really basic charcoal sketch. I'm using a General's charcoal pencil here, and you can see that I keep everything pretty simple. I'm not outlining the individual strands in the braid, although I do put some little marks just to kind of count how many little shadow areas there are in there. And here I'm mixing up a dark color, which is a combination of ultramarine blue, phthalo turquoise, and cadmium red. And that's what I'm using for my dark color. And the next color is basically the same thing with some more red added to it, just to get it a little bit warmer because my hair here is um, kind of brownish. So um, I keep everything really dark because I have intentions of layering highlights on top and if I start off really light I don't have anywhere to go with my highlights and it's not going to look like my hair. So you can see here I'm even filling in where the highlights are going to go with a relatively dark color. You kind of need to start off this way so that you can layer the highlights on top and so that the highlights have a little bit of punch. You can see just the finished first layer. Now I'm zooming in so that I can show you how I use this brush. Take a look at the end on the brush right there and you can see that the hairs are kind of splayed open. So this is intentional. The reason that I use this brush, it's a Sable Tech flat with really long hairs, is that the hairs kind of separate at the end which automatically makes a sort of random natural pattern. If I go in with just a you know number two round brush and try and make each individual stroke, it looks a little bit fake. Um, the paint doesn't go on quite the same way, but using this technique and using the texture of the brush, to create the texture of the hair, it looks softer, it looks more natural, and it looks more random. I'm actually going to be using a round brush later, so you'll be able to kind of see the difference, but whenever possible, I really prefer to do it this way and just use the brush with really gentle marks sweeping over the top and I slowly build up the highlights. So you can see I'm not using a particularly light color. It's definitely not white. I've got a lot of color mixed in there. And the reason being that if you go all the way white on hair, especially a dark hair, it tends to look more like literally white hairs or gray hairs. <laughs> Notice here I'm going to add some dark paint over the top of this highlight and you'll see two things. One, I'm holding the brush not like a pen. I'm laying it down a little bit and then I'm just dragging it in one direction over the top. 
something that I find uh, causes students a lot of trouble is when they put down paint and instead of putting it down and placing it there, they kind of like stir the paint all around to try and make it even. So um, yeah, I refer to this often as stirring, that students are looking to blend paint. What they're really wanting to do is soften an edge, but instead they're stirring the paint all around and it just makes everything kind of flat. I'm wanting you to see here that I'm mixing a dark color to lay over the top of some of this. And again, look at how I'm picking up paint, I'm putting it down, and then I'm dragging it. And each time I go back and I pick up more paint. The reason here that I pick up paint so often is because I'm adding a dark color in and as I add the dark color over the lighter color, my brush picks up some of the lighter color. I don't want to keep painting around with that lighter color I just picked up. I want to add dark color so I keep um, going back and picking up some more paint. Sometimes I'll also wipe off my brush, kind of that little uh, blotch there next to that blob of dark paint is where I've been wiping off the brush too, but um, what's important here is to be really mindful of what color you're using and where you're placing it and why. I'm making all these decisions kind of uh, quickly here, but I'm really thinking about what color I want to put where instead of just kind of waving my brush around everywhere and letting it pick up whatever color is underneath um, on the painting and just mixing it about. I'm being very deliberate in placing light colors and placing dark colors where I feel that they need to go. One of the things I'd like you to think about is that the details here are primarily reserved for the light area. And what I mean by that really is that the texture is reserved for the light area. So where the highlights are, I've used the brush texture to try and make it look like there's some individual strands of hair being highlighted. And I've also used the dark paint in the same way in that highlight area where I'm dragging the dark paint over the top of the highlights in order to create the impression of strands. But in the shadow areas, you really want to keep things more cohesive and softer. If you think about it, we get information about what we're looking at through light. So in the light areas, we can have information about all the little strands, but in the shadow areas, there's not as much information coming into our eyes, so it doesn't look quite right to put a lot of detail in there. As I'm working here, you can see I'm kind of flicking the brush a little bit. Really, the brush is barely making contact with the surface of the painting at this point. So sometimes I'm just waving the brush and it's not really doing much of anything on the painting because I'm just trying to barely let the hairs touch the painting so that it creates kind of a natural uneven and slightly unpredictable highlight pattern. Another thing to consider is that if you create texture all the way throughout the hair in the light areas and in the shadow areas, you tend to get a look of spaghetti rather than a look of hair because hair is kind of soft and blankets together in groups and when you start to have thicker pieces going all the way from the scalp out, that's when you get something that looks a little bit more like noodles. Here you can see that I'm going in with a little round uh, number two brush and the marks are not quite as soft and not quite as beautiful. So I've just started to go over and now I'm going to slow down so you can see, started to go over with the dark color again and just drag it a little bit into the light area to soften the edges and make it look a little bit more natural. I feel like individual brush marks from a little round paintbrush are gen generally a little bit too like beefy or chunky. Now this particular painting doesn't show a lot of where the hair meets the scalp, 
but at the nape of the neck and also there's a little bit of the part in the hair you want to make sure and make that edge soft usually the hair doesn't begin and end at a perfect crisp edge but gradually the hairs just spread out more and get shorter um, and less dark so this is true also um, near the forehead and also around the outside edges that you want to just keep things looking soft because unless you have a wig or something like that hair doesn't have an exact place that it ends and you want everything to be kind of wispy so this is also when you're going to put in some stray hairs that go outside of uh, the overall mass of hair on the head you want to use wispy marks either oil out your painting or work wet into wet so that it kind of melts into the background a little bit and just don't sweat it too much when either the background color or the skin color kind of smears and mushes its way into the painting it actually in my opinion looks quite charming to let that happen here's the finished sketch which took me about two hours to complete as always, thank you for making it through to the end with me. I hope that you found this useful. If you did, give me a subscribe, give me a like, and let me know what you want to see next in the comments.